the blend feature connects multiple parallel planar sections together. And in ISDX, the style tool, it's referred to as a loft surface, and other CAD software packages refer to it as a loft as well. I'm working on the fuselage of an aircraft, and in an earlier video, I created a datum curve from an equation. I used that to make a parabola, and then I revolved it. And one other thing to note is that I'm using a special default template for aerospace. You'll notice that my different datum planes have been renamed to station, waterline, and buttline. And I have another video that explains how to make custom default templates as well. So let's get on and start creating a blend. To do that, you will go to the Shapes Overflow menu from the Ribbon Model tab. And I'm going to choose the Blend command. And here we have the interface, and I'm going to generate this not as a solid feature, but as, as a surface feature. And I'm going to sketch the sections. If you already had some predefined curves, you could use those instead. And let's click on the Sections tab, which is in red. And I need to define my first section. I don't have a datum plane for my sketch plane, so if I go to the far side of the ribbon, I have a drop-down menu where I can create an embedded datum. So let's click on the Plane tool, and I'll select an edge from my Revolve feature, and then click OK, and now resume the dashboard. And for my section, I'm going to click the Define button, and let's sketch on the datum plane that I just created. And for orientation, I want to view the other direction, and I'm going to have the datum plane called Waterline face the top of the screen. Let's click the Sketch button, and I'm going to go to my Sketch view. And my first section is just going to be the same as my parabola that has been revolved. And let's turn off some of our different datums to reduce screen clutter. I could use the Project command, but I would end up with the wrong number of segments that uh, compared to what I really want to have in here. So I am going to go to my References, and I'm going to add in the edge as a reference and then I'm going to create a circle centered on here and I'm just gonna let it snap in there so that's good and one thing about blends is you have to have an equal number of vertices per section so to help me out in this situation I'm going to throw in a couple of center lines and use the divide tool in order to break them up so let's locate another one over here Let's hit the dimension tool. I want a dimension from here to here. Make that 30 degrees. And here to here. Let's make that 30 degrees as well. And now we will use the divide tool. And I'll create segments here. You'll notice on one of the vertices, there's now an arrow, and that arrow indicates what's called the start point. In other words, when it's going to connect the vertices of this section with the next section, it's going to start at that location. Be aware the direction that the arrow points does not matter. All that matters is which vertex it is on. All right, so that is good for my first section. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm just gonna rotate slightly. Now for defining my second section, you could either locate it at a reference, like if you had some datum point or some other datum plane, you could locate it there, or you could use an offset dimension. And so for my next section, maybe I want it back here, distance of 96. Let's enter in that value. And then now I will click the sketch button. And let's go back to our sketch view. And for my next shape in here, I'm going to use an ellipse. So let's go to the ellipse command. And let me turn on my datum plane visibility. And I just want to make sure I have in my references the datum plane that I want to snap to. Now let's go back to our sketch view. That's good. Click on the ellipse command drag it out over here and I've exaggerated let's go and turn our datum plane visibility back off again and now for my different dimensions in here let's make this a value of 100 
and this we're going to make a value of 80 for the first section so basically I just want to get a little more oblong from the first section and just like before I'm going to throw in a couple of center lines let's go to our dimension command and again I'm going to make them 30 degrees off from the vertical reference and we'll use the divide tool again and I'm clicking on the different vertices and now you'll notice that again we have that arrow on here and you want to make sure the arrows line up if your arrows don't line up you're going to get some twist in the feature so let's hit the check mark and now you can start to see a preview of the geometry that's being created and now let's go and define a third section for my third section we will go to the sections tab I'm going to click insert again and you have the drag handle for specifying how far the next section is going to be and I want the next section to be the same size as the previous section so let's hit the sketch button I'm basically going to sketch the same thing that I had before let me turn on my datum plane display and add into my list of sketch references this datum plane over here sorry about that my cat decided to make an appearance now that we have our additional uh, additional sketch reference let's go to our sketch view and again for this section it is going to be the same shape as the previous section let's hit the ellipse command and then drag it out over here and use a value of 80 and a value of let's say 100 for this and let's throw in our center lines let's use the dimension tool change this to a value of 30 and this to a value of 30 and again we will use the divide tool and select the different segments there we go again we want to make sure that our start points line up if your start point didn't line up if it was on the wrong vertex you could select the vertex that you do want to use and then right mouse click and hold and choose start point but I don't want to do that one of the other options that you have in here is a blend vertex if you have an uneven number of vertices in different segments sections for example if you had four in one section and five in another section you could define a blend vertex that would have two vertices in one section converge down to the one vertex in the other section but I'm not going to change the start point let's hit the check mark and again you can see the preview of the feature I'm going to add one last section in here let's go to sections and then insert and this one we're gonna make it back here uh, let's make it back a distance of 160 and then let's hit the sketch button and let's go to our sketch references I'm going to add into the list of sketch references the butt line plane and let's go to our sketch view and for this one I'm going to make a little more interesting geometry I'm thinking about where the uh, cockpit is going to be so I'm going to start off with a, a couple ellipses in this situation let's create our first ellipse I want to make it both wider and taller than the original and let's make this a width of 90 and let's change this dimension to a value of 120 and ah, that's a little too big let's change this to 100 yeah it's good and for this I'm going to make another ellipse and let's locate about over here and about there and for this second ellipse let's make this width here value of 60 and let's use I'll make it bigger let's make it 72 and this height here let's make this a value of 80 
and this a value of 80 over here. And now I'm going to use my friend Squiggle Trim, also known as Delete Segment, to get rid of a bunch of entities in here. There we go. And once again, let's throw in our center lines. And let's put in our dimensions for the center lines. 30 and 30. And let's divide our segments. Again, just so I'm having an equal number of vertices per segment. And this is a situation in which we have the start point on the wrong vertex. So let me select the correct vertex right click and choose start point and you'll notice again the arrow is pointing the other direction the direction the arrow points does not matter that's good let's hit the check mark and there we have our additional segment and to show you what this looks like let's hit the check mark and so there I have the blend between the various different segments and for some of the other different options in here, let's select on the blend feature and edit definition. And first off, if I go to the tangency tab, if your first and or last section is adjacent to existing geometry in the model, you can then make your section uh, be dependent on that. So for example, if I go to the drop down list, instead of having it free on the start, I could make it tangent to the existing geometry. And now it's highlighting one of the edges and I'm going to pick the surfaces that would correspond to what it should be tangent to. And last segment over here. That's good. And so it'll adjust the geometry appropriately. Some other different options that you have in here is that you can go to, instead of having it smooth, in other words, putting a spline between the different vertices that it's lining up, you could choose it to be straight. And when I choose straight, you'll notice that the tangency tab gets grayed out. When you have straight segments, you don't have that control over the boundary geometry. And another option that you have in here is to cap the ends. Let me hit the check mark, and I'm gonna hide my first revolve feature in here and you can see that this looks like a solid feature but with the capped ends it just means that I have an enclosed volume in here and if I edit definition let's say I don't want straight segments between there if I go back to the options tab and choose smooth instead if I go to tangency my tangency condition had been wiped out so I would have to recreate it inside of here and so with that, that's how you can create a blend feature in order to take multiple planar sections and connect them to each other at the vertices. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.